So I was on Pottery Barn's website looking for a little bit of inspiration and I saw this set of marble like soap containers, toothbrush holders, and I thought we could recreate this from Dollar Tree. So I picked up a tray, soap dish, soap container, and toothbrush holder. And some of them were already white, but I wanted them to all be the same color. So I just started by spraying those with two coats of white spray paint. Next, I wanted to give them a marble appearance. So what I did was I grabbed a tub of water. Now you guys have seen me do this on my channel before and I wanted them to be like a gray color. So I had this spray paint that was kind of like a translucent that I decided to use for this project. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray your spray paint on the top of the water. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create fun little patterns. Then you can take your items and dip them into the water. Once you pull your item up, you're going to see whatever design you put in the water on your container. So I repeated this with all of my items to give them a marbled finish. I did have a little bit of trouble with the tray. I kind of had to move it around to get it in the water where I wanted it to. And the thing is, is if you don't feel like they have enough paint on them, just add more paint to your water and put your items back in until you get that desired look. Now another thing I do when I pull the items out, I'll take a paper towel and kind of wipe off any excess that I don't like the look of, and that just kind of helps as you're going through the process. Here's how my Dollar Tree marble containers look styled on my vanity. I think it's important in these bathroom DIY videos to give you guys great options for organizing items that you may keep in your bathroom. So this next item is going to be to hold your earrings. So what you're gonna need is a frame from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need the burlap that they sell at Dollar Tree. Now, if you can't find it there, you can usually find it at most craft stores. So remove all the contents from your frame. You're also going to use wire cutters to pull out the backing pieces on the back of the frame. Then the burlap, you may want to press or iron it just to get it as straight as possible. Now, this is such a simple DIY. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start on one edge and you're gonna put hot glue on the back and you're gonna place the burlap over top until it's dry. Cut off any excess. Then you're gonna pull your burlap as tight as possible and wrap it around the other side. Hot glue, hold that in place, cut off the excess. With your two sides, what you wanna do is move the fabric in a little bit, pull it up and hot glue it in place. Again, cut off the excess and repeat that on the other side. Now I'm gonna add this frame to a Dollar Tree easel that I actually DIY'd in a previous video. All I did was add some wood beads to the bottom of the easel and then I spray painted it with this pretty gold color. So with my burlap frame, I'm gonna put it on top and then you can add any of your earrings and I think this display is absolutely gorgeous. The next time you're at Dollar Tree, be on the lookout for this rectangular frame. It's new this year. I was so excited to find this. I feel like it's a great dupe for anthropology. So I bought two of these frames. I also bought some of their eight by 10 frames. I'm gonna remove the backing from all of my frames. And I did want them to fit in with my color scheme, so I'm gonna be using those two rub and buff colors that I was using earlier. And with my foam brush, I'm just going to wipe those onto my frames. I'll let those dry completely. Next, I wanted to add in some prints that I had picked up off of Amazon. I will link them for you down below if you'd like to use them in your house as well. I'll add in the Amazon prints, then I'll put the original backings back onto my pictures. And you could see how I displayed them in my bathroom on my shelf. 
One of my favorite projects that I've done in the past is get a really pretty jar, a mason jar typically from Dollar Tree and turn it into a soap container. I did it in the fall with a pumpkin jar and I recently found these gorgeous jars at Dollar Tree and thought they would be perfect for it. So you wanna pick up any jar, you also wanna pick up a container of soap from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to remove the lid from the jar and I'm gonna start using my wire cutters. I'm gonna poke a hole in the middle of my lid. Then I'm going to go on the inside of the lid and use those wire cutters to pull back the metal. Now you wanna do this very slowly. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the lid out of your soap container remove the inside tube portion, and then you're going to place the top of the soap container onto your jar. The key is you wanna pull the metal back until this top of your soap container will fit onto the lid, but you don't wanna go far enough that you see the opening. I kinda just pull the metal a little bit and try to put it on there and just adjust it until it works out great. To attach the top of your soap container to the lid, you're gonna use a little bit of E6000. I'll spray paint the lid with a Rust-Oleum hammered finish spray paint. Once that dries, I'm gonna fill up my jar with the rest of the soap from the soap container I had before, or you can use any soap that you have. Now, I think anytime you can put your soap container on top of a tray or elevate it, it just looks so much nicer in your bathroom. So I found this wood piece in the craft section at Dollar Tree. I also picked up some of these little tiny wood cubes, and that's what I'm gonna use for this next project. I'm gonna hot glue the wood cubes to the bottom side where it's smaller on all four corners of my tray. I'm gonna stain the wood with a color called golden oak. I use a foam brush and I paint it onto my tray. Then I will take a paper towel and immediately wipe off any excess. Let that dry completely and I'm gonna show you how I style my tray with my soap on top. I'm also using a candle from Dollar Tree. All right, this next DIY is a way that you can get a spa-like experience at home. What you're going to need is a pack of decking from Ikea. Now you're only gonna need six tiles to create this mat and you wanna pull out six tiles and you're going to start in the top left corner and then you're gonna attach the one next to it, making sure you have the tiles going the exact same way. They're a click and lock system, so all you have to do is press them together. If they're a little stubborn, you can come in with a hammer and that will help to hold them in place. But I put three across the top and then three across the bottom. Now you may be wondering, okay, what am I gonna do with that black border on the side? What I did was I took them outside and with my oscillating saw, I just got the excess off around the edges. It was pretty easy to do. And then you can use this in your bathroom as a nice spa bath mat. So you're going to pick up two frames at Dollar Tree. These are eight by 10 frames. I also picked up two of their black floating shelves. Now I've actually never used these before, so I was excited to try them in this project. So with your frame, you're gonna remove all of the contents, the glass, everything. I'm also going to use my wire cutters to actually pull out the metal backing pieces on the back of the frame. These come out fairly easily. Then take the plastic off of your floating shelves. And then I'm gonna use some E6000 on the edge of my floating shelves and I'm gonna place them on the front of my frames. Now I want to do this so that I have a little bit of area at the bottom as well as a larger area at the top. Now with my second frame, I'm going to do the exact same thing, making sure I put my shelf at the same height on both of the frames. Now with E6000, you wanna let this dry completely overnight just so it has a really secure bond. And then you can use command strips to hang these on the wall in your bathroom. You can also put anything you want on top of here. I styled them two different ways with two different Dollar Tree vases and succulents. I absolutely love the acrylic organizers that they sell at Dollar Tree for $1.25, but I wanted to add some paint to them so that they fit in better with my decor that I had just created. So I'm gonna add painter's tape around the middle, and my plan is to paint the bottom.
I want it to be black, but when I'm painting something like plastic or acrylic, I find that it helps to add in an element like baking soda. That's going to give that paint a grip texture and it's just going to hold in place so much better. And you typically have to do less coats when you're painting. So I mix the black paint with a little bit of baking soda, and then I'm going to do one coat along the bottom of both of my containers. And then I'll let that dry. I did a second coat. Once that was completely dry, I removed the painter's tape. I added these containers in my bathroom with makeup brushes, but really you could add anything you want to organize in your bathroom to these containers. This next DIY, we're gonna be using Quick Create again, but I have to tell you, it's absolutely one of my favorite DIYs in this video. We're gonna be making Quick Create candles. One of the things you wanna think about whenever you're making Quick Create items is how you're going to pop them out. So with silicone, that's a great option. So with something like candles, I like to use juice containers because they're paper and I can easily peel them off after it's set into the mold. So I'm gonna be using two different size juice containers. So I'm just going to rinse them out really well. Then I'm going to cut around the top portion because I'm not going to need that and it's going to help me to fill them. I'm also going to need some scrap wood from Dollar Tree. So I have these long wood pieces and I want one of the wood piece to go about as high as my candle is going to be. So I'm going to cut down a piece and then cut down another piece the exact same size and I'll cut it with my hacksaw. Then I just need two other pieces that are a little bit shorter. Honestly, make them whatever size you want, but I wanted them to be a little bit different. I'm going to add in the wood pieces to the corners. So I want both of the wood pieces to sit in there so that they touch on one of the corners, if that makes sense. And I'm going to do that for both of the containers. Now it's time to mix up and add in my quick crete. So I'm going to mix up the quick crete the same way. I'm going to add in quick crete. I'm also going to add in water until it's at a pudding consistency. Then I will put the quick crete into my containers, holding those wood pieces on the side because I don't want them to move around in my piece. And I'll add the quick crete till I get to the top of the wood piece. And I'll do that in both of the containers. I'm also going to add one of these larger tea lights that I picked up from Walmart. I'll put that in the top and I'm just gonna press it down until I can't see the metal portion around the edge. You wanna let this dry for at least five hours or overnight. Come back in and then you can start to peel off the container. I find that this is the easiest way to do it. Peel off the container until it completely pops out. I also, again, like to let this sit overnight because it's still a bit wet at this point. So you wanna let it set overnight. Once I peel off the container, now I want to really expose those wood pieces and it's going to happen where some of that quick crete is going to get around the edges. So I used one of my scraper tools to scrape off any quick crete that's on the outside portion of my wood pieces. And this is a great thing to do before it really dries. So scrape that off. You can also sand down the wood pieces to make sure you can really see them. Then let your candles set overnight so they can harden before you use them. And then you can style them in your bathroom and here's a look at how mine turned out. Let's talk a few storage containers that you can use for your bathroom. You're going to need a mason jar or some type of jar. You're also going to need another little container for the top. I'm gonna to be using this button container that you can get in the craft section at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start by gluing the mason jar lid to the outer rim so that this is one piece all stuck together. Then I'm going to remove the labels, which always takes the longest amount of time. I'm also gonna be using some Goo Gone to help me get those labels off. I'm gonna be spray painting both of the lids with the hammer colored spray paint. Once that dries, I'm going to assemble everything together. So I'm gonna take my clear jar and I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue and add it to the top of my mason jar lid. I'm gonna fill the bottom up with cotton balls. And with the top, I'm actually going to put in some Q-tips. Now, as I put in the Q-tips, I realized that the lid didn't fit on really well, but I figured since it was kind of at an angle, I could just leave the lid off and it would be a great way to store my Q-tips. 
Now another organization item that I found at Dollar Tree was this iridescent jar. I absolutely love the way this jar looked and the top was actually in a rose gold color, but I wanted the color to fit in just a little bit more with my color scheme. I'm gonna spray paint the lid with the hammered finish. I love to use jars like this to store my lipsticks in. I think it works out really well. I'm gonna show you how to display the Q-tip containers and the lipstick container. So go to your local Dollar Tree and you want to just search for those bathroom essentials you're going to need, like a soap container, a toothbrush holder, maybe a soap dish, and I also picked up a trash can. Now I will say the soap container I got was in the $3 Dollar Tree Plus section, but everything else was the $1.25. I went on Pottery Barn's website and I saw two pictures I really liked, these cream colored bathroom items, but I also really liked the gold accents in this one. I'm going to try to put the two of these together. So I started started by just removing the lid to my soap container and then I taped off the top. I have a color called Sand Dollar. This is a spray paint that I got by Rust-Oleum and I'm going to spray paint two coats on the bottom of my items and then I'll flip them over and do two coats on the other side. Now with the trash can, you may need to do three coats. I also added in a texture spray in the same color. It's not gonna give me a lot of color, but it's going to bring in that Pottery Barn texture that we all love. I also added a matte sealer since these are bathroom items. To finish off the edges and give it that gold look that I liked in our inspiration pictures, I'm gonna be using Rub and Buff and I'm gonna add that around the top edges. Now, as I was doing this, I felt like I was adding a little bit too much gold, so I needed to mute it down a little bit. So I found one of my cream sample paints. I added that on top of the rub and buff that I already put down. I felt like it just muted that rub and buff just to the right amount. Now it's time for a wood element. Now Dollar Tree has really gotten better about adding wood items to their crafter square, but I'm gonna be using an item that's been around for a while. It's this bamboo cutting board over in the kitchen section. Now this is smaller in the Dollar Tree Plus section. I believe they have these a little bit bigger if you're wanting something bigger, but I'm gonna be using the cutting board and I'm also going to be using this wreath. I actually used this in a DIY a few months ago, but I'm gonna be using the rest of it and I just need the beads for it. This this wreath comes in three different colors. There's a natural one, a medium tone, and I think a black. I'm going to be using the medium tone beads. So I pulled off 11 beads. I'm going to start on one side and I'm just going to hot glue where the circle opening is down to the back side of my board. And I'm going to alternate on every side until I make a row with my hot glued beads. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side with 11 more beads. Now this makes a great tray and it was so easy to put together. Here's how my bathroom set turned out. Make sure you paint that subscribe button. If you're watching me on your phone, the subscribe button is right next to my channel name. Click the red subscribe button so it goes from red to gray. You can also click the notification bell so you can see more videos like my Dollar Tree DIYs, home packs, and room makeovers. I love the way that plants brighten up any space, especially a bathroom. So I wanted to create a plant holder. I had these four Dollar Tree frames that I think I bought maybe a couple of months ago, but you can probably find something similar at Dollar Tree because they pretty much keep the same frames out most of the year. So you're going to need four for this project. Now mine are black and gold. I love the color of them. So I went through and I pulled out that backing piece in the frame. 
so I wanted to have some kind of black and white picture in the frame. I grabbed some of this adhesive wallpaper off of Amazon, but you could use scrapbook paper, wrapping paper, anything you have on hand for this project, just whatever your needs are. And I'm gonna trace that around my paper where I wanna cut it out. I'm gonna cut out the four squares. and then I'll put the squares back into my frames. I did pull off that backing piece of the frame because I'm not going to need that. Then from there, I hot glued the frames together so they created a box. Now I'm not worried about creating a base to this because it's always gonna be sitting down that it doesn't really need a base. From there, you can style it with your favorite plant or faux plant. For our next organization DIY, you're going to need to pick up one of these clear drawers from Dollar Tree as well as a set of curlers. So what you're going to do is pull out the drawer of the clear organizer. Then you're going to take one of your curlers and you're going to mark it with a Sharpie where you think it's going to fit snugly in the drawer. Then you use your scissors to cut the foam out and then I used my wire cutters to cut the little white wire that's inside of the curler. Place it into your drawer and make sure it fits. You're gonna do that with the rest of your curlers, making sure they all fit into the container. I'm gonna remove the white piece from the end of my curlers, and then I'm gonna use a black Sharpie to paint the edge of my curlers. Since this was a clear drawer, I knew you were going to be able to see it. I bought another roll of the burlap that I was using earlier, and I'm gonna use that for this DIY. Since burlap is a little see-through, you wanna fold it over twice, otherwise you're gonna see the pink curlers inside. So just fold it over twice, and I'm going to cut it down. I'll cut off the excess, Next, I'm going to hot glue one of my curlers along the edge. I'll cut both of the edges off as well so that it fits nice and snug. And I'll wrap it to where I think it's gonna completely cover my curler and then I'll hot glue it in place. Then I'm gonna check and make sure that my curler is going to fit into my clear container. I'm gonna repeat those steps with all of the curlers. When you add all of these into your container, this is going to be a perfect organizer to put all of your rings in. I found this veneer at a big box store and I thought, what if I tried to wrap this around these vases? Now, that was a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. I cut off a smaller piece and measured out how much I wanted to wrap around. But once I had a piece to wrap around, I added an E6000 to the veneer. And then I wrapped it around, but to hold it until the glue dried, I had to wrap with some painter's tape just to kind of hold it securely. I let that sit for about 24 hours before I remove the tape. Now, if for any reason you have a piece that comes up or doesn't wanna stay in place, you could add additional hot glue if you needed to do that. But in the end, I really liked the way the veneer wrapping looked on these containers. I thought these would be perfect to add in cotton balls or Q-tips. I found these pink containers. I was so excited. I thought they would be perfect for organizing items in the bathroom and maybe in a drawer because they're so shallow. So I picked up two of these pink containers. Another item you can find at Dollar Tree is their peel and stick wallpaper. I really like this one with like the white and gold look, but there's probably, I think six to eight different options to choose from. So I'm gonna put the wallpaper at the bottom of these containers just to kind of finish them off, make them look a little bit more high end. So I put the wallpaper down, put my tray on top. I'm gonna use a pencil to draw around the bottom of my tray. Then I will cut it out. 
I'm going to place it at the bottom without peeling off the sticky just to kind of figure out if I need to cut any additional off. Then I'm gonna freehand it. So I'll cut off any areas that need to be cut off, put it back into the container. And once I have it exactly how I want it, I'll pull off the sticky and place it down. I love the way they turned out and they're gonna be perfect for my makeup. Let's do another easy wall art idea. So you're going to get a board from Lowe's or anywhere and you want it to be 12 inches wide and about three to four feet long. I'm gonna mark the board so that I cut pieces that are 12 feet long. So I'm just going to use my tape measure and then mark it across with a pencil. I'm gonna cut on the lines with my miter saw. So I'm just going to cut the board one way and then I'll flip it over and cut it the rest of the way. I find this is the easiest way to cut boards. I'm gonna cut all three pieces. I wanted to add some holes to the top of my board so that I could put some florals in there. So I'm gonna use my drill to drill down some holes. And I picked my drill bit based on the size of the floral stems that I was going to use. And at the top, I'm going to drill three holes in the middle. Once I have all of my holes drilled, I'm gonna come back in and sand the boards anywhere where I had you know, pieces kind of hanging off from where I had to cut them. Also, I like to sand the front of my boards before I stain them. I'm gonna use the same color golden oak. I'm gonna brush it on with a foam brush and wipe it off with a paper towel. Once those dry, my last step is to add in some eucalyptus florals. I have this garland in my stash, so I'm gonna cut off three pieces and put those in the top where I had made the holes. Now to hang these on the wall, I'm just going to use some command strips on the back and I'll place them together in a row. And here's a look at how this wall art turned out. One of the new items I was excited about at Dollar Tree are these ceramic containers. Now I think Dollar Tree had an idea of making these like frames that you could use for a wedding, but I had something completely different in mind. There's three different shapes. There's like a rectangular one, a circular one, and then this other one that looks kind of like a butterfly. I also picked up some stickers. So I started by taking the frame pieces off the back as well as the stickers on the back. Now I saw in my mind soap dish, trinket tray, you know, all those things for these. I thought they'd be perfect for a bathroom. One of my tricks for whenever you want to put stickers on any surface, cut it out first and actually put it onto your tray. That way you can get a visual, kind of move things around until you make that commitment of actually sticking it in place. So I cut out all the stickers and that's what I did. I just kind of moved them around until I was happy with the placement of them. Then I just stuck them onto the ceramics. Again, I'm gonna be using that same Mod Podge that I used earlier. It's a blue dishwasher safe Mod Podge, and I'm going to be doing a thick coat on each of the ceramic containers. Once that dries, you can add them to your bathroom. You could put a soap container on there. You could also put little decorative soaps or maybe even leave it out for like rings or earrings. Here's an inexpensive way that you can create a toilet paper holder in your bathroom as well. So you're going to need a paper towel holder and some kind of circle. I grabbed an embroidery hoop off of Amazon. I'm gonna remove the outer portion of my embroidery hoop. Then I'm gonna add E6000 to the base of it. I'll put the paper towel holder on top. I'm also going to go around the edges and make sure there's no excess glue kind of on the edges of it or on the inner portion. Once that dries, I'm gonna spray paint it with two coats of a matte black spray paint. You can put this tucked behind your toilet area with a couple of rolls of toilet paper. Be on the lookout for this other new anthropology dupe frame. This one is an oval shape, really pretty. So let's do an organization idea with this frame. Start by removing the backing. 
Again, let's use those two rub and buff colors to add in that really pretty tone. Then I'm gonna put the backing back on and I'm gonna use a pen to trace the inside of my frame. I'll pull the backing back off. Then I'm gonna be using some really thick yarn. I wanna cut some pieces that I can put down into where I had just drawn that template. I want the pieces to be glued very tightly together because I want to try to put earrings and rings in between the yarn. So I'm just going to keep layering yarn on tightly with hot glue until I get to the bottom. Once I get to the bottom, I'll just put the backing back onto my frame. I didn't glue it or anything, just put it back on. Next, this is something you can put out in your bathroom to organize your stud earrings or your rings. You guys are gonna have to let me know if I've been using Quick Create too much, but I absolutely love it and I think it's perfect to add to bathroom items. So you're going to need to pick up some Quick Create. Now I will tell you, buy it at Home Depot. I went to Lowe's, they didn't have it, so make sure you pick it up at Home Depot. And then you're also going to need a square silicone tray. Now if you wanna make these another shape, you could do that, but I went with the square silicone ones and I'll link them for you down below. You also need some hooks. Dollar Tree sells hooks. I have a really affordable set that I use use in several of my bathroom makeovers. It's from Amazon. You get 12 in a pack. They're so affordable. I'll link it for you down below. I'm going to use three disposable bowls, fill them up with quick create, and then I'm going to add in water. I'm going to mix water in each of my bowls until the quick create is at a thin pudding consistency. Honestly, the thinner it is, the easier it is to work with. Now this next part was kind of an experiment for me because I have never added paint to Quick Crate, but I wanted them to be different shades. So I kept one exactly the way it was. And then with the other two, I added in white paint to one and then I added in black paint to another. And I just mixed that in to give me a different color. I'm gonna pour in each of the three colors into my silicone mold. Then you're gonna kinda of tap your silicone mold to make it nice and level. Take your hook and you're going to put it on top of your silicone mold. You're gonna cover the hook with some more of the quick create. Now, as you're doing this, you're seeing that my hooks are kind of falling over. So I needed something to kind of hold them all in place. I put it on my spray paint turntable. I'll link it for you down below. And then I just added in different paints and a piece of wood just to kind of hold them up until it had a chance to dry. Now, the first one I did, it was not runny enough. So on the other ones that I put together, I added in a little bit more water just to make sure it laid nice and flat over the hooks. So do that for all three. Let it dry for at least a couple of hours. Quick Crete dries really quickly. And then after a couple of hours, you can pop them out of the molds. And then I also like to let them sit overnight to just really harden. The next day, you can add them as hooks in your bathroom with command strips. I think these look so amazing. Now, if you're looking for bathroom storage ideas at Dollar Tree, make sure you go to the glass jar section because these are some of the best things you can get to organize your bathroom. I got the largest jars that I could find. I bought them in a set of three. Sets of three just look great. So I always try to buy things in sets of three if I can. Next, I'm going to spray paint the lids with two coats of a white spray paint. Then I came in with some rub and buff and put that around the edges. Next, I'm gonna come in with some gold handles that I already had on hand. These were ones that I was using in another project that I bought on Amazon. If I can find them, I will link them for you guys in the description box. And I just used some E6000 to attach those to the top of the lids. Make sure you're using E6000 or construction style adhesive glue for this because other glues are just not gonna hold these in place. And that's all there is to this. These are great for all those little items that you have out in your bathroom.
In these bathroom DIY videos, I love creating home decor that you can use as organization, but it's also really pretty and you can sit out in your bathroom. And I feel like this next DIY really does that. So I bought a plastic succulent tray at Dollar Tree. This is typically over in the party section. You're also going to need some nautical rope. They sell this at Dollar Tree, but I typically buy mine off of Amazon. I'll link it for you down below. So if you've seen any of my rope tray videos before, you know I love making a rope tray. This one's a little bit different. So I'm gonna start in the center by hot gluing the rope in the very middle and I'm going to wrap it as tightly as possible. As I go around, I'm gonna to continue to add hot glue. The trick that I like to do when making these rope trays is you wanna make your rope really tight together so you don't have any gaps. That's gonna make it look so much more high end. I'm gonna to continue to add glue all the way around. Also, when you're putting your glue on, make sure it's a nice thin layer because you don't want a lot of glue sitting up on top of your rope. Trust me, it's gonna look a lot better in the end. So I'm gonna add the rope until I get to the edge of my tray. Now, once you get to the edge, you're going to continue to add a layer to the top. We're wanting to curve it around the edge. I'm gonna to continue to add rope to the outside layer. Then I'm going to flip my tray upside down and do the edges that you would see if the tray was sitting out. I'll continue to add hot glue and nautical rope. And then once I get to the inner portion, I'll stop there because that's gonna be sitting where you're not gonna be able to see it. I'll cut off the excess and hot glue the end. To style the tray, I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree vase I'm also going to use a pot that I already had with some florals that were in my stash. And then the candle is from Dollar Tree. I was so excited to find this candle this year. Dollar Tree is always getting some new fun containers over in the kitchen section. I happened to come across these and I really liked the iridescent look to them. I thought they'd be perfect to hold some smaller items in my bathroom. The tops of these were rose gold and I was wanting more of a deep brassy gold. So whenever I'm doing these bathroom videos, I like everything to be really cohesive. So I picked out two of my rub and buff colors that I'm going to be using for all of my projects. Using a foam brush, I'm going to add those rub and buff colors to my lids. Once that dries, I'm going to drill two holes into the top of my lid. I'm gonna be using this faux leather string to act as a pull on the top. So I'll just lace it through and then lace it through my other hole. I'll double knot it on the back. And then I'll repeat those steps on the other lid. Cut off any excess. From here, you can put your items in here. I'm gonna be filling mine up with bath salt. And then put the lids on. And here's how they look. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is bathroom DIY. Do you remember that picture I showed you at the beginning of the video of my Pottery Barn inspiration? Well, if you zoom in, you're gonna see a really pretty eucalyptus vase. And when I saw that, I knew that I could recreate that with Dollar Tree items. Dollar Tree sells one of these slender vases, so I picked that up. I also had to get some eucalyptus. Now they do sell eucalyptus stems at Dollar Tree, but in my opinion, they're just not the best quality. So I prefer to get them at Walmart. These I actually picked up at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna spray the vase with with two coats of sand dollar. Next, I'm gonna do a sponge technique on the vase. So I need a sponge from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut that down into small pieces. You can get this over in the bathroom section. I'm gonna use a variety of paints in browns, golds, and creams. So what I like to do when I sponge paint is I start with my darker colors. So you're gonna see I'm adding a lot of browns and my golds here. And then I'm gonna come in with my color that's really close to my background, which is a cream. When you add the cream color on top of those darker colors, it's just gonna help it look more blended in. Once my vase had a chance to dry, I added in these eucalyptus stems from Hobby Lobby, and here's how it looks. Mm -hmm. 
Let's make a bathroom towel holder. You're going to need to pick up three of these hooks from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need a wood board. I have to admit, this one was a scrap board that I already had. It's about a three and a half inch wide board, but really use what you have on hand. I'm gonna be adding two colors of rub and buff to my hooks. And I'll also be staining the board with two colors. I'm gonna be using natural stain and early American. I'll just wipe that onto my board and remove any excess. Once everything has a chance to dry, you can assemble. So I decided to only use five hooks for this project. With my two end hooks, I'm gonna put them about four inches from the edge, and then I'm gonna space the other three about 10 inches apart. That way I have a nice amount of room. I had a long wall that I could hang this on. And then I'll just use the screws that were provided and my drill, and I'll screw the hooks into the board. Now to make them blend in a little bit better, I use those foam brushes to add a little bit of rub and buff to the top of my screws. And here's how it looks hanging on my wall. Now, if you're a Dollar Tree shopper, you probably know that Dollar Tree has these little magnetic containers in a pack of two. They also have this magnetic board that they sell in the frame section. So I thought this would be great for organizing items in a bathroom. I picked up the magnetic board and three of the packs of the metal tins, and I'm gonna use these to organize in my bathroom. I didn't paint or do anything to this. I'm just going to hang the magnetic board on my wall. You could also put this on a cabinet. I think that would work really well. You're gonna use some command strips on the back and just adhere it to the wall. Then with your containers, you can add in different things like hair accessories, could add in bobby pins, rubber bands, really anything that you want to store that's a smaller item. And you can put them in your bins and put them up on the board. This board is going to hold six of the containers. I think you can save so much money by adding a beautiful vase into your decor. So I found these two different sizes of vases at Dollar Tree. They're in the $1.25 section. I'm gonna spray these one time with the two colors I showed you, the warm caramel and the nutmeg. Once that dries, I'll flip them back over and give them another coat of spray paint. Next, to give some texture and dimension to these vases, I'm gonna be using Plaster of Paris. I just put a little bit into a disposable bowl, added a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna simply take a paper towel, dab it into the wet Plaster of Paris, and then I'm going to dab it all over my vases. Now, you can do as much or as little of this as you like to really get that aged look you're going for. Let that dry completely. Now, while that's drying, I decided to create some flower frogs to put on the top of my vases. Now, these are a great idea to help you with sectioning out your stems. So you're gonna need some air dry clay and you're going to roll it out. Next, take one of your vases. I did this before I started spray painting and you're just going to create a kind of like a cookie cutter template so it creates a circle and you're gonna need two of these. After I cut these out, I rolled them out just a little bit longer so that they were just a tiny bit bigger than my bases. They don't have to be perfect, don't worry about them. Then you wanna create holes into your circles. So I just used a pin and poked a hole through the circles. Now you wanna make sure that you get the hole through all the way because once they dry, you wanna be able to put a stem in there. Let these dry for at least a day, flipping them over on both sides. These will dry fine, just sitting out for about 24 hours. And then once you're ready to put your stems into your vase, you just place these on top of your vase and then you can add in real or faux stems.
Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that I love these containers from Dollar Tree for a bathroom organization. I have one in my bathroom now with a gold lid that I use for all of my lipsticks. They're just the perfect size for a bathroom. So I picked up three of them. I started by spraying the lids with two coats of a flat black spray paint. Now lately I've been loving a product called Rub and Buff, so I decided which one I wanted to use. I'm gonna use a foam brush to put that around the handle just to make that handle stick out a bit. So I added some cotton balls. I also had some bath salts. I think this would be great sitting out in your bathroom on a shelf or your vanity. Now, when I was doing the DIY with the palette earlier, I was looking at it and thinking, you know, this would make a really cool soap dish because wood items are so in right now. All I did with this little palette was I stained it with one coat of that golden oak stain and then I wiped it off with a paper towel and I put it out with some decorative soap. Doesn't this look cute sitting out on my vanity? You guys are gonna have to let me know if you like it. If you're having guests over, here's a fun towel hack you can do using a hand towel and a washcloth. I love a tiered tray in the bathroom, so I wanted to put together one for this video. So I grabbed a cake plate, also a glass plate that I had, and then for the base to go in the middle, I just had this little plastic glass they sell in a pack of six at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna do my combination of E6000 and hot glue to put the base onto the middle of my cake plate. and then I'll put the glass plate on the top. Now I started by spray painting this piece gold, but I have to say I didn't really love the look of the gold. So then I thought, okay, let me add in some rub and buff, which I liked it a little bit better. It kind of gave it like that vintage look. Then I decided I wanted to place some butterflies onto the tray. I was okay with that. I added a little bit of rub and buff to the top of it, but in the end, I just was not happy with it. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna start completely over, which I never typically do, but I did in this case. And I want to tell you guys the process because I want you to know that sometimes I do DIYs and they can fail. So I started over. This time I spray painted it white because in my mind, I was picturing this tray more like the ceramic dishes that I had made. I glued my cake plate to the center portion and put a glass plate on top. You can add jewelry or makeup or whatever you want to these trays and I think they look great in a bathroom. Yeah. 
One of my favorite items I was so excited to find were these black and white baskets. When I saw these in the organization section at Dollar Tree, I was like, okay, I'm grabbing these. I love having these kind of baskets to organize underneath my sink in the cabinets, and I just love the color of them. I wanted to personalize them a little bit, so I grabbed one of those little pallets they have at Dollar Tree, and I didn't really have the right tools for this, but I just went with it. I just started pulling the pieces of wood off, and then I used my wire cutters to cut them in half. Now, if I would have been at home, I probably would have used a saw, but you know what? I just kind of went with what I had. So I needed three of these little wood pieces. Next, I drilled a hole in the top of them so that I could hang them. And then I went in with the stain color Golden Oak and just stained them. I just do one coat with my foam brushes and immediately wipe it off with a paper towel. I let these dry completely because you don't want to add any labels on because they're not going to stick. But while they were drying, I went into Cricut Design Space and all I did was just type out in some of my favorite font, some different words like scrub, wash, hand, and I was meaning like washcloths and hand towels for those. I sent them to cut on my smart white vinyl. I just weeded them out and transferred those onto my wood pieces. I used a little bit of twine to tie them to the baskets. And then from there, I just put in washcloths, hand towels, and little loofah scrubbers. I just think these look so nice and you would never know that they were from Dollar Tree. Now, I bought these containers at Dollar Tree. They're pretty easy to find over in the kitchen section. I got two of the larger ones and one of the smaller ones. I'm also going to be using two of the wood rings that you can find in the craft section at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna start by sawing these in half. I used a hand saw that I had on hand and I just elevated the rings and cut them down the middle. And then I'm gonna be using E6000 to attach my rings to the top of each of my containers. Once the E6000 has a chance to dry, I'm gonna be using a metallic finish spray paint by Rust-Oleum. I'm gonna spray two coats on the top of my containers. I'll let that dry completely. Then you can add anything either decorative or useful in your containers that you wanna put out in your bathroom. I'm gonna be adding in some bath salts with the pink ones and some other bath salts that I had at my home. And here's a look at how the containers turned out. Whenever I create bathroom videos, I like to look on Pottery Barn's site for inspiration. This year I was really into those gold and brown colors and I also wanted to bring in some of those warm wood tones. You wanna to go to your local Dollar Tree and look for some of those bathroom essentials, like a soap container, something to hold your toothbrush, a soap dish, and I also found a planter that I thought would work great for a trash can. For my soap dish, I added three large wooden beads to the bottom with E6000 and hot glue. I removed the pump from the soap dispenser. With all four items, I sprayed them with two coats of a white matte spray paint. Next, I wanted to give them a marble appearance. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you've probably seen me do this with like a gray color, but I wanted to try to do it with some of the warmer colors. So to do this technique, you're going to need a bucket of water. I like to use a storage bin and I just fill it halfway up with water. I'm gonna be using the color Warm Caramel as my first color, and I'm just gonna spray it lightly on the top of the water. I'm gonna take one of my items, dip it straight down in the water, and pull it straight back up. I'm gonna repeat this step for all four items, and as you can see, whatever pattern you have in the water, you're able to get on your item. I'm also going to do this with the color nutmeg because I was really wanting like a textured appearance and a multicolored look. Mm -hmm. 
Another thing I did was I tried the color black, which I did not like. That was too dark for me. And I'll show you how you can fix that mistake. So one thing you can do is once that dries, you can add on additional paint to kind of tone it down or give it a different look. So I added on a cream paint. I also added on like a sea foam gray color and that kind of toned it down and made the colors blend together better. You can also seal all these pieces with a clear matte spray paint. Now a great tray idea is this wood canvas that they have out at Dollar Tree. Love the way this looks, but if you flip it over, it looks like a tray. So you could stain this whatever color works for you. I started with the color natural, but I decided I wanted a little bit more warmth. So I went in with the color early American. I just wiped the stain on and then I pull off the excess with a paper towel. Once that dries, you can add all of your pieces to your tray. I love when I'm shopping at Dollar Tree and I come across something that I'm just like, that would make the perfect DIY. And that's what happened when I saw this Busy Bee canvas bag. I looked at it and I said, that would make an awesome sign. So I picked it up for just a dollar. I was looking around for something I could use with this sign and I had this wood piece that I had used previously for another sign at my office. So that's what I'm gonna be using. You could also use an 11 by 14 frame at Dollar Tree, that would be great for this too. Or you could get a canvas and put it on a canvas. So I started by cutting off the top portion of my bag so it fit right on my wood piece. Next, I had these little black nails. I think I picked them up at like a hardware store, but they're just little tiny black decorative nails. And I'm gonna nail them into all four of my corners. Next, I cut off the bag around the edges and it was kind of fraying a bit. So I went in with some black paint and just did a little bit of distressing around the edges. Then with the extra threads, I just used a lighter to kind of burn them off around the edges. And here's how this sign turned out. It really only cost me a dollar because I already had the wood and I think it's adorable. I picked up this iridescent cup at Dollar Tree. Now this iridescent look is all over high-end sites right now, so definitely one to try out. From Dollar Tree, I also picked up some stickers. Now these stickers originally were supposed to go around a mason jar, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. These stickers were silver, but I wanted them to be gold. So I have this product called Rub and Buff. I use it quite frequently. I'll link it down in the description box for you. But I'm going to use two different shades of Rub and Buff it onto the stickers. Now you wanna make sure you do this lightly so you don't cover the entire sticker. That way you can still see the raised texture of the sticker. And I'm just gonna go back and forth between the two gold colors. Now I'll set this aside and let it have a chance to dry. Once the stickers dried, I wanted to add them to the base of my cup. I started by doing one lap around the bottom edge, trying to keep the stickers about the same level all the way around. Now this doesn't have to be precise, just do the best you can. Then I went every other one and added in an additional sticker. Then I decided I wanted to make them a little bit longer, so I went up so there was three stickers in a row. Now what's fun about this is you can do whatever pattern you want. In the end I decided I want it to be three stickers to two stickers all the way around. I have this product called Blue Mod Podge, which is supposed to be dishwasher safe and more waterproof. So I did one coat on the entire cup. I let that completely dry and then I can use it as a toothbrush holder in my bathroom. Next up, let's make some wall art for our bathroom. I have this specific bath mat that anytime I'm at Dollar Tree, it makes me think of a wall art piece and I thought this would be the perfect video to add that into. So I picked up a bath mat as well as this dish drying rack that's kind of like a clear plastic. You guys have probably seen it before. You're also going to need a couple of 11 by 14 frames. 
So I removed the contents of the 11 by 14 frame. So I just had the frames. And then I'm also going to use that little like piece of paper that says 11 by 14 in there to trace on a piece of poster board. I'm gonna trace around it. So I have two poster boards that are size 11 by 14. I'll just cut those out. Now with my frames, I'm gonna be using the same rub and buff colors that I was using before, and I'm just going to lightly add those to the edges. This is gonna give my frames a vintage look and give them more dimension. With the bath mat, it fits completely over the 11 by 14 frame. So I don't need to do anything with that. But with the dish mat, it doesn't fit completely over my poster board. So I'm going to place it on one side and then I'm just gonna take a scrap sheet of paper and tape that down on the other side. That way when I'm spray painting, I'm not gonna get any spray paint on that side. Then I'll take the 11 by 14 posters outside and whenever you're spray painting, you want to be directly over the top of what you're spray painting. That way you can spray over the top and you're not gonna get like weird angles underneath. It's not gonna be a perfect spray paint, but it's going to help you to get that stencil you're looking for. And I just used a blue spray paint that I had on hand. I sprayed the bath mat onto my poster board and then the best part was taking it off and revealing what it looked like underneath. I thought it looked awesome. I did the same with the bath mats. So I sprayed across the top, but with the bath mat, I actually had to let it dry completely. Then I took the bath mat off and then I repositioned it to the bottom half and taped off the top half so I wasn't going to mix my spray paint. I took it back outside and spray painted the other half and then removed that. Once both of the poster boards were completely dry, I could add them into the frame. And here's a look at how this wall art looks together.